the world. Subscribe now to the Hot 97 YouTube channel. It's Ebro in the Morning with Laura Stiles and Rosenberg. Ebro, Laura Rosenberg. And today we have a special guest, someone who is a hip-hop legend, Sir Ernie Panicoli. Welcome to our show. Thank you. It's a pleasure and an honor to be here. And uh, I'm grateful, that's all, man. Sir, you have captured uh, some of the most iconic images in hip hop. Rosenberg and I were going through some of your photos and, you, you know, and, and such incredible moments. You know, I have um, I've had the pleasure to have a, a, a little relationship with your daughter, Melissa, who's amazing. We shared so many gems. She champions you like no other. And it is just a, a privilege and an honor for us to have you today. And we're excited to talk about your book and everything you have coming up. And before we kick things off, we just want to say happy birthday, because I know you just celebrated a birthday. Yeah, a very ancient birthday. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, Wait a second. I got to put this out there, and I don't want all the rappers in, in America to, to come, you know, looking for me. But I'm the only guy, the only man in hip hop that admits his age. <laughs> well, tell us, what is it? I'm, I'm 75, but the thing is, uh, all the rappers do some special math where they take 10 years off. So I'm I'm the only man <laughs> in hip hop that doesn't do that. Well, Ernie, I ain't mentioning Ernie, no Ernie. names. Don't get don't. <laughs> oh no no, it's everybody. Don't you worry about that. Now if you if I've I've spent a lot of time. Uh, browsing the amazing Cornell University collection. Um, they have tons, I think 20,000 of your photos available online that we can all just look at and enjoy in a digital library through Cornell. So some of these go back, I can see certainly to the mid 80s. When did you first start pointing your camera towards hip hop culture? In the 70s. And it happened ironically because my son, used to skate at the Roxy and um, we, I would take him every Saturday to the Roxy and the Roxy always had somebody, whether it was whoever it was, uh, Flash was a DJ or whoever. So um, he was born in 69. So by 79, he was at the Roxy every weekend. And that was crazy because every, every little raggedy kid from all the boroughs and everywhere would be there on a Saturday and a Sunday and, you know, all the exhausted parents standing there, but that was uh, <laughs> one of the first places that we were all exposed to hip hop. And what did you think of it? Like, I, I'm trying to think about how one would have processed it without, you know, the context that we have now. What did you make of it musically? Did you immediately think this is going to be something really big or did it just feel like sort of a, a local new form of expression that was interesting? Well, I have to get rid of some misconceptions that I think are very present. First, there was no such word as hip hop back then. Mm -hmm. Fact. Second, hip hop as we know it now is four main elements with a fifth element being, you know, wisdom, knowledge, understanding. And at that time, a B-boy had nothing to do with a DJ. A DJ had nothing to do with an aerosol artist. So... Uh, I didn't see it as a cultural unification yet. Very important that we understand that. And just for background, it was later that people realized that each of these four elements were art forms and that they all came from the street and that they all had common geographical and spiritual and energy and, and racial uh, projection that, that created these these four elements and uh i think it was cowboy bambada um lovebug starsky that started calling it hip-hop and they got that and uh like harris one says hip-hop means hip means that we're the hippest people on the earth hop means we got the most energy so they made the term hip-hop <laughs> it's so cool <laughs> wow yeah. um go ahead rosary no, I'm just looking. You have so many amazing subjects, um, and you were just around so much. Um, who are some of your favorite people to shoot? Uh, your your pictures of Biz, uh, God Bless the Dead, the amazing Biz Marquis are phenomenal. Um, but you have so many 
subjects that you just seem to gravitate to. I mean, it's literally, if you look at Ernie's book, which is out right now and is amazing, getting phenomenal reviews, one of the biggest photo books in the world right now. If you look at that, you'll see these photos. Or if you look at the Cornell Library, you can get a look at just, you have everyone. So who historically are your favorite people to capture? Rakim. Wow. Rakim, Rakim, for the past decade, I've been making a living going around the world doing lectures. And I love language. And I was taught as a kid, even though I had nothing, to always learn to read, write, and, and speak. So language was very important to me. And here comes Rakim, who re energizes language and puts it into so many cadences and forms that it's amazing. If you go back and listen to him, um, I, I think one of the greatest songs ever done in hip hop was called The Mystery, Who Is God? And if you listen to that, you could see where uh, a lot of rappers would just throw their microphones away and you know go work at the car wash or something. So uh, I think Most Def uh, was another one, uh, Yasin Bey, who, who really profoundly, him and Talib really, Besides the fact that they ran a bookstore, owned a bookstore, they also had great love for the language. And, you know, mm. the language shifted as you went to the West Coast. It shifted as you went down South. So you always had to learn not only the hip hop phrase, but you had to understand the different uh, use of language and all of that. And that's what one thing that I loved about hip hop and rap music. And everybody needs to understand that Hip hop is five elements, not just mm. one. We get hung up on the music because that's something you can listen to, but it's graffiti, which is what drew me into hip hop. It's the MC, the DJ, and of course the dance. Uh, I've gone all over the world and photographed artists dancing, uh, b boys, and I'm, I'm, you know, the more. <laughs> I just can't even believe some of the things I've seen. It, it borders on acrobatics. I, I yeah. think that when you talk about breakdancing, B-boys and B-girls, uh, to your point, Ernie, because I know I've seen some of the OGs, like Crazy Legs, to this point, it amazes me the moves that he can pull. Like, I have seen him host, like, you know, recent, you know, um, dance battles or, or kids that are just still keeping the culture alive by practicing breakdancing. Rosenberg to see him even really get down the way that he get down is mind blowing. Like I, it hurts my back just thinking about it. Hold on, listen, right listen. Now. I, I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to diss. I don't want to diss America because I'm born and raised in Brooklyn. But when I went to Edmonton and Toronto and Vancouver, those brothers and sisters up there have just taken it to another level. And then you go to France and they just take it to a higher level yet and so on and so forth. So this, yeah, Legs and his crews, uh, Fable, who, who does popping and locking, you know, maybe they were part of the origination of this, but it spread around the world. And as it's, and, and the right. Japanese, don't even get me started with the Japanese. Right, right, right. No, you're so right about that. Are like, you know, mm. so, um, wow. Yeah, it, the, the beauty of hip hop, I think, is that it, it, it spread around the world. It, we had a hip hop pandemic. <laughs> yeah. Well in, the great, in the greatest way. In the um, greatest way. Your, your book, Hip Hop at the End of the World, you have a picture of a young MC Light and a young Queen Latifah. Tell us about that moment when you captured that specific well, photo. That's, that's a very funny story, and it's deeper than it might look. Uh, we were shooting Heal. Human Education Against Lies in mm. Harlem with KRS One and Fab Five Freddy as the directors. And, you know, these girls, they were girls then, they're women now, but they were girls and they were always matched with me and I was always taking pictures of them. And I don't know what happened. Somebody put on a beat and they started dancing together and they were just so, and I said, I, I started to take a picture. They just looked at me and they were like, <laughs> <laughs> and Why are you taking just, pictures of me? <laughs> it was just it was just one of those moments. And me and Law, you know, we're from Jersey, so 
you know, Latifah. Uh, it, it was just a classic moment. But when we got ready to do the cover of my book, Hip Hop at the End of the World, my editor, hmm. he, Luna, he says, wait a minute. He says, I do not want this cover and this book to be a sausage party. So I scratched my head, a sausage party. And it took me a minute to understand what he was saying. And he said, what do you think of this picture? And he shows me this picture. And, you know, I said, I'd love it. He says, good, because that's the cover. And, you know, he was half joking, meaning I could still make a choice. But the picture just had so much energy. And with all the women's movement and so on and so forth, I think it's about time that we have something other than a big sweaty guy with a hacksaw or a shotgun or some craziness. So uh, I, I think that the humor in the cover is a lot deeper. Plus, if you look at them two, they loved each other. They just, they were like- It's a beautiful up. photo. It, it was perfect. And you didn't want to diss them and you didn't want to mess with them, trust me. <laughs> That's they right. were not the people you wanted to play the dozens with. Laura, Laura, look at this gem. Oh, Clark Kent. So good. Young Clark Kent. Young Clark Kent. Looks. Smooth Clark Kent. Wow. With the with the four-finger ring, the Raiders, the Raiders hat, hat. The glasses. <laughs> and, oh, Ernie, man. I've seen some photos of uh taking it back to um to some summer jams because you definitely captured some special moments of hot 97 summer jams. Can you tell us a little bit about your experiences backstage and shooting some of the artists? Um, I, I don't know if it's my size. I don't know if you can tell I'm a big guy and uh, nobody ever messed with me. And I'd walk into these places and the security would be like, and they'd just look at me and wave me in, you know, because I didn't look like some fan <laughs> of some teeny popper. And um, it, it's funny the difference between backstage and, you know, on stage and in real life. Backstage, a lot of these brothers and sisters hadn't seen each other for months or sometimes years. And there's just an energy. And the beauty of what I do and, and my place in it was that they saw me as like an uncle. You know, I wasn't like an intruder or somebody from the press or the media. I was like an uncle. They're like, oh, hey, Ernie, what's up? You know, it was just like I was that I had that very coveted fly on the wall. Mm. A position in hip hop, and that that gave me access to everybody. Plus, they knew that I would never photograph anything that was negative, or scandalous, or or harmful, or ugly, or you know, if somebody's you know doing this or that, I'm not gonna a I'm not gonna photograph it, and b if I accidentally did, it would not be you know publicized. So I had that trust early on. Is there anybody that you never had the pleasure of, of capturing that was always sort of like that one elusive person that for some reason you just never ended up in the same room? Mm. <laughs> that's a tough yeah. one. Yeah, no, that's, that's <laughs> easy. Uh, David Bowie. And uh, even though you might say David Bowie, he's not a rapper, no, but he had an influence on hip hop. And, um, he, uh, that's, uh, <laughs> that's a great picture. And, uh, <laughs> uh I, I think Miles Davis, let, let me tell you a quick story. Miles Davis, uh, I was with, uh, Easy Mo B who did all the Biggie stuff. And he asked yep. me one day, he said, brother, who is it that you'd like to photograph that you've never photographed? I said, Miles Davis. And he looked at me. And he smiled. And I said, what are you smiling about? He said, I'm I'm doing an album with Miles. So I was like, he said, would you like to come to the studio and photograph? That's like asking somebody if they'd like a new Bentley or, you know, you know, it was just, <laughs> so I said, of right. course. And then what happened was each time Miles was in the studio, I was on location or in another country or whatever, or the times that uh, I was available, Miles didn't show up and, one day I was in a hotel somewhere in some city and uh, I had the, you know how you keep the TV on, you're laying in bed and you're, you know, you, you, the TV's on and, and you're not really listening to it. And, and there were all these collages of Miles Davis and I knew he had passed. So I missed that opportunity. 
and Miles was mm-hmm. somebody I wanted to shoot. Uh, David Bowie was somebody I wanted to shoot. In hip hop, I don't think I've ever missed anyone. I, I think I've shot everybody. The one shot that I wanted, I never got, which was all you know, nine of the Wu Tang together. But I shot all nine of them individually, and I shot half of them before they even became part of Wu Tang when they were still the genius and, uh, you know, um, <laughs> that's Prince another- Rakim. Prince yeah. Rock. Oh, we love you, Rakim. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> what about uh? What about this photo right here? Do you have any memories of this one? This is a. a tri- it looks like a tribe called Quest. Um, I see Charlie Brown from Leaders. I think Russell, a weird looking Russell Simmons. Yes, wasn't that Laura? A very young Russell Simmons. That's right. Yeah, and also uh, too. Yeah, and then also, was, yeah. Uh, any recollection? Yeah, that was actually at the album release. Uh, for their tribe album, and that was one of the f- most fun nights. The the guy with the S on his hat is the guy who played in the movie with Tretch and Pepper. Uh, oh, yes, that's the dude who's in um in that. I thought that was Charlie Brown. That's the dude who's in Juice. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, you know, it's funny you show me a picture of Fife because I just got this from his mom. Hmm. Mama Fife wow. represent, and uh, she wrote a beautiful little piece in there. And uh, Fife was really special, man. Q-Tip is special. All of them. Ali, I got a parking ticket once, got my car towed, and Ali gave me money to go get the car out. And I went back to the shoot, and I showed him the ticket to let him know, you know, it wasn't a joke. And he started laughing. I said, what's so funny? He said, look who wrote the ticket. And the guy who wrote the ticket was named Shahid Ali. <laughs> so, you know, all the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. so good. That's when, right? that's when Tribe had four members. Uh, Jay Roby was still, you know, in the group. Yep, and, and, and was gone for a while there in the middle until this last album when he came back and probably had his biggest presence ever. Um, yeah. This, how did you decide what, what made sense for the book? And also, do you have stuff that didn't make the Cornell collection, or do they basically have everything? Brother, Cornell happened 12 years ago. I have 12 years of work that they did not incorporate. I also have um, much stuff that didn't get to Cornell that I only found recently. You know how uh, you're going through a box and, you know, you see shoes and so, you know, and then you find, you know, 300 photographs that you had never seen. And that's like your birthday and, you know, Halloween and Christmas all in one. So, yeah, I have a ton of pictures uh, that never made the book. And uh, I'm glad you asked. Are you ready? May I? Yes. Take a Please. deep breath. Oh, wow. my goodness. Take, take oh, a deep Gorgeous. Take, take a deeper breath. Well, so these are just these are just portraits that you took. Wow. Out Chuck D, yes. I see Lauren Hill. Wow. Oh, two two of the late greats. Two legends. Humpty oh, Hump and God. Guru. Shock G and Guru. Look at a baby 50. face, 50 cent. <laughs> these are incredible portraits. Wow. That's, that's the genius. The genius and, yeah. and, and, meth. and meth. Wow, with the bl- tightly rolled blunt for meth. <laughs> Salt and pepper. Let me see. Oh man, these are amazing. Look at Salt and Pepper and Spinderella. Wow, and Kane and Flay. This is unbelievable stuff. Well, I'm working on a new book and it's going to be a limited edition, but it's going to be high art. I want to make a marriage wow. between three things that never got married before art, photography, and hip hop, period. And I think that it's way, way, way overdue that we have that marriage. Oh my Lord. Can you share with us some early, um, hmm. some early experiences, early moments with uh, with Big? <laughs> the first time I met him, we were doing New York Undercover. Remember that show? Of course, course yes. And I was with, I believe, Ice T, Eric Sermon, Ice Cube. I don't know. A whole bunch of people were at the Palladium, and they were filming a scene. And I had two cameras, and it was sweaty. And I walk up to Biggie 
And I said, hey, Biggie, I'm Ernie. What's up? I'm Brother Ernie. And he pushed me away, and he started cursing at me. And I was like, he said, I don't give a, you know. And he, I take my cameras, <laughs> I put them on the floor, and I step to him, man. And Eric Sermon, you know, he's a big guy. He jumps in between us. And, the, you know, other people are, and I'm ready. And Biggie looks at me and goes like this. He goes, I said, what you laughing at? He said, fool, we went to lunch last year. I said, what are you talking about? He says, I know you. We went to lunch. He said, remember we were at the Mary video and we went to lunch? I said, yeah, I remember going, that, that couldn't be you. He said, eating better now, Gucci sweater now, you know, <laughs> and doing the whole thing. And from that day forward, we were best friends. But from that day forward, I never trusted him because every time I turn around, he he tried some. He had an incredible sense of humor, and he liked me because I, you know, I was like, I always seemed surprised by his antics. Like, I was in a room with him, and I went to the restroom, come back, my camera's gone. So I'm like, Biggie, where's my camera? He says. He starts cursing at me and chest bumping me and telling me I ain't here to, I'm, a, I'm an artist, I'm a rapper, I'm not supposed to be watching your stuff. And, you know, he's all serious and everybody in the room was like, and then I look over at the couch and they hit it under the couch. I said, you, you know, but that's the type of stuff he would do. He had a beautiful sense of humor and I'm not going to front, I cried when they, you know, when he passed. Mm, and um, We all did. Yeah. And... Um, you know, that's the elephant in the room is the, the violence in hip hop and the unnecessary violence and the, the, the madness. But uh, most have said it better than we could. He says, hip hop is not some giant living up in the hills. It's us. If we're whack, our music is going to be whack. Our lives are going to be yeah, whack. It's, it's... Hip hop's going to be whack. If we're bad to our women, hip hop's going to, you know. And I love hip hop is a reflection of the, the general world around us. So uh, I totally, man. I totally uh, got it that, you know, hip hop is nothing but a big black mirror. Yep. And looks back at all of us. And I, I heard a rumor yesterday and I hope it's true. I don't feed into rumors, but I heard there's going to be a re-emergence of black star. That Talib and uh, most are going to be getting back together. And I've been hearing that too. There's been, yes, there's been rumblings. We have too. That there that there has been work and you know there's that scene in the uh laura there's that scene in the first episode of the kanye doc where there uh kanye is playing beats for black star and he plays them the the brooklyn's finest instrumental and it's like yeah i'm gonna flip this brooklyn finest beat for black star and every time you watch everyone's like oh my god i want to hear black star on that beat we never heard that what, what right right exist? right so the time would be the time would be right. Um, Ernie, one, this book. One of the, the best, excuse me, one of the best, deepest songs I ever heard in my life came out of them, which is "What Is Beef?" <laughs> you know, yep. beef is geopolitics. You know, yep. I was like, Jesus. Oh, uh, beef! Beef by Most Def is incredible. Um, <laughs> Ernie, your the, the book, the book is available everywhere it's getting incredible reviews this is just a phenomenal book to give a, a, a gift for a hip-hop fan or just to have it's on your coffee must. table at home it right is, it's a must it for is. your collection may, yeah, may i share staple. something with you slightly political and very funny the most Please. anybody got a guess what the most popular picture in the book is which one hmm. Wow. <laughs> That's so incredible. Good. Wait a second. I wow. shot that in 1990. And that's. <laughs> well, I'm confused. Marlon, where is this, Marlon, where was this LL. photo from? It's Marley and LL holding yeah. a check that says insufficient funds from Donald Trump. A what is check, the story yeah. behind that? Pardon? What's the story? Oh, the story was L O was on uh, the Letterman show and we were in the prop room taking pictures and they saw that insufficient funds and they held it up, never knowing 
that, you know, so many years later, that would come. <laughs> and people from around the world send me emails at brother Ernie at gmail.com. And they all say, that's the funniest picture in the whole book. And it's the truest picture. And it also shows what those of us in New York already knew. But uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, wow. boy, as my man Flavor would say. <laughs> Ernie, thank you. It's been a pleasure. The book is amazing. Congrats. And when you drop that uh, art, hip-hop, photography book, we'd love to have you back and talk about it again. Please. Thank you. If, you. if you ever have a question about anything, call me. And uh, if you have a question about hip-hop, if you need anything, if you need a contact, I don't care what, call me. And... Uh, I'm a simple man, just turned 75, and I give thanks for every minute. If you go to YouTube, I have a video called Thank You, and I think it sums up everything. And I will end this from the heart saying thank you. Thank you it's so much. It's been a pleasure Ernie. for us. Thank you so much. And get the book Hip Hop at the End of the World, available everywhere.